All right, welcome back. We are doing lesson 6.10 and it's called using trig relationships and practicing. So whenever it says practice, it means you've gotten an enough understanding that now you can apply um, your understanding to different problems. And specifically here, we're gonna be solving application problems using trig. And then it says, how do I apply trig ratios to practical problems? And what are the essential elements of modeling a real world context using a right triangle, even when only an imaginary right triangle exists, right? So for each, each problem, make a drawing to represent the situation, write an equation, and then solve it. Do not forget to include the units of measure. So we're just going to be doing problems um, over and over again. And your big deal here is draw a triangle, look for the right triangle, find an equation that would help you solve for the missing piece, and then don't forget to use units. Um, a couple of things just as reminders. Um, when we're talking about when we're um, when we're talking about triangle, right triangle actually, right triangle tools. Um, I've told you there's two of them that I mainly use. Number one is Pythagorean theorem. And this is one just dealing with sides and looking for a side, right? And then there's trig, which deals with um, angles and sides, right? I have, si I have sides, I need the angle. I have an angle and a side, I need another side. Trig is gonna bring the angle side piece together versus Pythagorean theorem, you're only dealing with sides. So Carrie places a 10 foot ladder against the wall. If the ladder makes an angle of 65 deg degrees with the level ground, how far up the wall is the top of the ladder? So again, draw a drawing, look for your right triangle, figure out which equation you're gonna use and then solve, okay? So um, my, my drawings, when, when it says to draw, you don't have to actually draw a ladder. You, all you're drawing is a diagram to represent it. So here's my ladder up against um, a wall. Walls are always um, 90 degrees with the floor. And it says it makes a 65 degree angle and the ladder is 10 feet. Okay. So this is my picture and it says, how far up the wall is the top of the ladder? So they're actually looking for this distance here, which I will call Y. Um, and if the, you're like, well, why would you call it Y, Ms. Johnson? Because Y is a usually vertical distance and I wanna get your brains to think about it like that. Okay. And so then here, your job is to figure out, okay, well, which thing is gonna help me solve this? Well. The mere fact that they gave me an angle here means that I can't use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm probably gonna use trig. Now, some of you have gotten really, really good at this, that you can look at this and be like, boom, I know exactly which trig ratio I should use, Ms. Johnson, and, and then you're on your way. If you're still getting used to this, my suggestion is that you start off by writing sine of 65 degrees, cosine of 65 degrees, and tangent of 65 degrees and then figure out which e which ratio is actually going to help you don't forget that you're supposed to be using so ka toa and i say it like that to help you remember who is like who's defined by what so sine of 65 opposite over hypotenuse is y over 10. and because that is an equation that has one variable. I don't even need to look up cosine and tangent. But let's just say that you looked up cosine and you're like, oh, that side's not even labeled. Adjacent's not even labeled. So this one's adjacent over 10 feet, right? And then tangent is opposite, which is y over adjacent, which again, I'm not, um, the reason why I don't want to use tangent is there's too many variables. So I'm not going to be using that. The reason why I don't want to use cosine 65 is it's going to have, it's going to have me find something that I don't need to find. So I'm not going to be using that. So because I'm going to be using this equation here, I'm going to start solving it. And so if you notice, I need to get um, y is being divided by 10 feet. And so how do you undo division? And you're like, oh, just multiply by 10. Good. So I'm going to multiply by 10, knowing that 
whenever you're multiplying sine by a number, you always want to pop that guy all the way out in front so that um, it's not, you, there's no confusion. Should I multiply 10 by 65 first and then take the sine? It's very clear, right? So your answer here is 10 sine 65 degrees is equal to um, y. Okay, and then I'm going to plug that into my Desmos calculator. So I have a bunch of random stuff in there. So let's clear it. 10 sine 65. And then you should be like, hey, Ms. Johnson, make sure you check your calculator to make sure it's on degrees. And it's not. So good thing we checked. And there's my answer, 9.06 feet. So this is about 9.06 feet. And that's why. And I always like to take it back to my picture and say, which is equal to 9.06 feet and see if that actually like holds true in that picture. Does that right triangle kind of sit true? And you're like, oh, I guess it makes sense, Ms. Johnson. The hypotenuse is longer. A leg could be 9.06 feet. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. What you're looking for here is for something to not make sense. So that way you can figure out, oh, maybe I forgot to put um, my calculator in degree mode or whatever the case might be so that you're checking your answer. So here I'm just going to put 9.06 feet is my answer. Okay, so again, all we did was we drew a picture. We labeled our triangle. We looked for our right triangle. We labeled it. And then we figured out which ratio between sine, cosine, and tangent was going to help us. And then we solved that equation. Okay. So I'm going to have you do this one. I'm going to read it. And then I need you to try to do this one completely on your own. And then if you get stuck, unpause the video and then pause it to the point where you, you're like, oh, I get it and then check your answer. So do this in increments. Don't expect yourself to know how to do the whole thing all at once. These are all in phases. So um, so the very first thing that I want you to try to do is just draw a picture. So I'm gonna read it. It says a flagpole casts a shadow that is 15 feet long. And the angle of elevation of the sun at this time is 40 degrees. How tall is the flagpole? Okay, so the very first thing I want you to do is to try and draw a picture. Okay, now that you tried to draw the picture, here's my picture. And again, Ms. Johnson, she's not a very good drawer. Let's just pretend that, and then here's my little flag. Maybe it's blowing in the wind or something. Oh, that's a bad flag. Huh, that's okay. That's my flag. So um, there's my flag. And um, they don't know how tall the flagpole is. So I'm going to label this height as Y. And it says it casts a shadow 15 feet long. So I'm going to pretend here's my shadow. You can imagine this just being like a shadow like this. And this is 15 feet. And then so you can kind of see my right, tri my right triangle already, right? So there's my right triangle. And it says um, the angle of elevation of the sun at this time is 40 degrees. So angle of elevation, remember, is, so this guy here, is always going to be from horizontal up. And that's what it looks like, horizontal up. So I kind of imagine my horizontal and I draw it up to that angle of where it casts that shadow to the very end of that um, flagpole where the tip of the shadow matches up with the tip, the tippy top of the flagpole. And then you can imagine, you know, back here, if you extended this out like this, the sun is out here casting shadows, right? Or casting some rays and that's how the sun, the angle of elevation looks. Okay, so this angle of elevation here, they're trying to tell you is 40 degrees. And they want you to find that. Now, if this picture is too busy, um, in reality, I will just tell you my picture probably would have just looked like this if I wasn't teaching. I'd just be like, boom, this is why this is 15 feet. This is 40 degrees. And I say, okay, which one is this? Okay. So um, go ahead and if you already know how to do this, go ahead and move on and check back with me and your answers. 
if you don't know how to do this, this the very next thing I would do um, is I would write out my sine, cosine, and tangent just like I did up here. Another way to do it is figure out, according to 40 degrees here, which sides did they give me? Well, they gave me this side here, which is called, this is opposite for 40. And this side here, because it's adjacent to 40, it actually touches the angle. We call this side the adjacent side. And so in my brain, I'm thinking of so ka to a. And I'm thinking, which one of those has opposite and adjacent? And you're like, oh, it's tangent. So let me write tangent of 40 degrees is equal to and then opposite, which is y, over adjacent, which is 15 feet. And then you guys know what to do from here, right? Because we just did it. So how would you solve for this? Go ahead and try on your own and then check back. Okay, so then you should have multiplied both sides by 15 to undo that division. Again, he goes all the way out in front. I like to keep my units with me. And so for those of you who don't know why I don't why I like doing that is because then I don't lose track of it. And it's another source of me checking my answer. So y equals to 15 feet times tangent of 40 degrees. So my answer is going to be something feet. And I know that because tangent of 40 is going to give me a ratio that has no units, right? And then 15 feet times a number that has no units is feet. So then I'm just going to plug this into my calculator. So 15 tangent um, 40. And I still will check to make sure I'm in degree mode just to verify. So it's, it's just a force of habit so that I won't ever get into that habit of not knowing. So I got 12.6 feet. 12.6 feet is about y. So I'm going to write that here. 12.6 feet. And I think I like that answer because if my shadow is about 15 feet and the angle of elevation is about 40 degrees, the pole could be 12.6 feet, which makes sense to me. Like it, I'm not looking at some outlandish numbers here. So yeah, I agree. 12.6 feet is my answer. Okay. Okay, so again, all we did was drew a picture, labeled our picture, figured out which equation we should use, and then solve it. That's all we're doing. All right, let's continue. It says, in Southern California, there is a six-mile section of Interstate 5 that decreases 25, or 2,500 feet in elevation as it descends the Grapevine Hill to the Tejon Pass. What is the angle of descent? What are they talking about? Okay, so there's a six mile section of Interstate 5 that decreases 2,500 feet. So again, I'm just gonna draw my triangle. And you're thinking, Ms. Johnson, your triangles all look the same. That's about right. So they want to know the angle of descent. Okay, so that's this angle here. It's an angle of depression. So that's this angle here they're looking for. Um, I'll call him theta, but he, this is also theta, right? Because remember, we talked about how these two angles are congruent because um, of the parallel lines, those parallel horizontal lines with, the, with um, your transversal. So those two will be congruent. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just know that this angle is congruent. So I'm looking for that angle. So I'm just going to erase off part of that drawing there so I, I can get there. Okay. Now, if you know about driving, when you're driving on a freeway, there'll be these like little signs that that'll say like the grade, they call it the grade, right? And then it'll, I think it, I think this is what it looks like. Don't, don't get me wrong, but it looks like a sign like this and it has like a, a hill like this and has a truck. Ms. Johnson's going to try to draw a truck. And it looks like this, I don't know, with wheels, something like this. And then they have a percentage right here. 
So that percentage is basically telling you um, the grade, like how fast or slow or how steep it is rather. Okay, so anyways, I need to know uh, where the 2,500 go and where does the six mile section go? So first of all, they're trying to trick you here because they have two different units going on. They got feet and they got miles. Um, I need to look up, I think in my own brain, there's 5,280 feet in a mile. So how many feet in a mile? Yep, I was right, 5,000. Okay, so there's 5,280 feet in one mile. So I'm going <clears> to, <throat> instead of using decimals, I'm going to convert that six miles into 5,280 feet or into feet. So I'm going to multiply six times 5,000 times 5,280. It's 31,680. So this is, um, so this is 31,680 feet. So in case you're wondering how I converted that just really quickly, um, I basically used unit um, dimensional analysis. So I went six miles times. If I'm converting, I will, and I don't want miles, I'll put miles on the bottom. So those units will um, divide out, right? And since I want feet, I put feet on the top and then I put the numbers. So then I put 5,280 feet in one mile, it tells me to multiply. So I get 31,680 feet. Is that right? 31,680, okay, perfect. Okay, so then I have to figure out where the heck do all these numbers go? Where does the 2,500 feet go? Where does the 5, uh, 31,680 feet go? So it says that there's a six mile stretch of the road. So where's the road here? And then it says that decreases 2,500 feet in elevation. And so if you know about elevation, elevate, elevation measures how high or how low something is, right? So if you are in, um, you know, if you're 2,000 feet um, above sea level, then you're, you know, you're probably somewhere elevated in the mountains maybe, okay? So that 2,500 goes here, okay? And where's the freeway? Well, the freeway is not going flat. The freeway is going this way, 31,680 feet. So if you can imagine there's cars right here, that's a really good drawing of a car. I know some of you are thinking, how are you not just an artist, Ms. Johnson? No. Anyways, um, so that's where the cars are, are on. They're not down here. The cars are not here. That's not where the cars are going. They're not going through the mountain, right? Okay, so then you're asking yourself, okay, well, what equation relates this? Well, like I said earlier, I like to draw my pictures. They gave me the opposite side and they gave me the hypotenuse side. And so some of you are thinking, so katoa, which one of these has the opposite and the hypotenuse? And you're like, oh, it's sine. Okay, good. So then we're going to go sine of theta, which we don't know is 2,500 feet divided by 31,680 feet. Interestingly enough, those feet divide out. Okay. And so now you're thinking, okay, but Mr. Johnson, what do we do? How do we get theta out of sine? Well, you'd have to find that what undoes it. So up here, we were dividing by, um, or no, we were multiplying by 15 because that's what undoes division. So what undoes sine? Sine inverse. What, Ms. Johnson? Sine inverse and sine, they undo each other. So I'm just gonna take the sine inverse of both sides. And so you have to put sine inverse in front of things. So literally you will see theta equals sine inverse of 2,500 divided by 31,680, right? And so whatever that comes up with on the calculator, by the way, sine inverse is under functions. It looks like sine to the negative first, but that's not ever how we say it. 
Okay. So then we go 2,500 divided by 31,680. And I get 4.5 degrees. And am I in degrees? I am. So theta is about 4.5 degrees. So this is a tiny little angle here. It's a tiny little angle, right? And that makes sense because if you go, if you've ever seen, I don't know, cars drive down a hill like this, it's, it's, you can lose control pretty quickly. So the grade on that is really, really small. Okay, 4.5 degrees. Everybody okay with that? Let me write my answer. Okay, so take a second and just think about which, what part of this was it drawing? Um, was it drawing the picture? Was it labeling? Like, were you unsure of where all those sides go? What is the difficult part? Okay. 